In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon to you. All very welcome to our Mass uh, from Knock Shrine. Today we welcome those of you joining us online and uh, those of you also joining us on e EWTN uh, television. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we have the fourth candle lighting, uh, the fourth, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and <clears throat> in the fourth candle it represents Mary's role uh, during the season of Advent. The Mass is being offered for Maud Caulfield and Patrick Highland of Cuya Middle. So, to prepare ourselves then to celebrate the Mass, when we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we're really coming into the Holy of Holies. It's a place where we meet God most intensely on this earth. And because we're coming into the Holy of Holies, we begin by acknowledging that we're not worthy. And so we ask God then for forgiveness and for healing and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all the enemies surrounding him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, and do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that very night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus the Lord speaks. Are you the man to build me a house to dwell in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a leader of my people Israel. I have been with you on all your expeditions. I have cut off all your enemies before you. I will give you fame as great as the fame of the greatest on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel. I will plant them there, and they shall dwell in that place and never be disturbed again. Nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will make you a house. And when your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
and compassion stronger than the sky. I will sing forever to you, my God, throughout all time. I will sing to you throughout all time. I will sing to you. I have sought and found my servant with holy oil. I will anoint you. My hand will always be watchful. My arm will be your strength. I will. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to him who is able to give you the strength to live accordingly to the good news I preach, and in which I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, but now so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere to bring them to the obedience of faith. This is only what scripture has predicted and it is all part of the way the eternal God wants things to be. He alone is wisdom. Give glory, therefore, through him, from Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. 
The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will ru rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. The Holy Spirit will come up, uh, but uh, Mary then said to the angel, how can this come about since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let, let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Isaiah and the Old Testament prophets more remotely foretold Christ's coming, and then John the Baptist, the Advent saint, more immediately foretold his coming. And now today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, Mary enters the scene. Today we have the Gospel of the Annunciation. And when Mary appears in the Advent scene, it means Christmas is near, very near. It's tomorrow. It's a busy time. For many people, it's incredibly stressful. People are at their wit's end. This year, the world is marred by violence, war, and division. There are lots of sadness, gloom, and doom around this Christmas. But difficult though it may be, we should try to focus on what Christmas is all about. It's all about God becoming man. Emmanuel, God is with us. Dear Ling. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. In the busyness of our lives and these hectic days, we, we must remember that it's Christ's birthday we're celebrating, what St. Francis used to call the birthday of all birthdays. And a question we might ask ourselves today on Christmas Eve <clears throat> is, how will I celebrate Christmas meaningfully this year? How will I celebrate Christmas meaningfully this year. Now here are a few suggestions, even to choose one of these, you might find it helpful. And ways of celebrating Christmas, how, how to keep Christ in Christmas is, for, exa for example, by feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, visiting the imprisoned, welcoming the stranger. Feed the hungry. This could mean supporting charities that are feeding th those starving in Gaza and in the Ukraine. <laughs> also supporting Mary's Meals, that's a charity that focuses on feeding the starving children of the third world. But it's not just those hungry for food, it's also those hungry for justice, for friendship, for a word of praise and for a word of encouragement. Give drink to the thirsty. Not just those thirsty for water, but also those thirsty for kindness, for forgiveness, for hope, for understanding, for a listening ear, and above all, for peace. Visit the imprisoned. Not just those behind bars, but also those imprisoned in depression, in phobias, panic attacks, grief, and addiction. Welcome the stranger, the refugee, the unwanted, the homeless, and the brokenhearted. This is how we keep Christ in Christmas. And in all of this, what is really crucial is that we, rem we, we must remember that we are celebrating his birthday. He must be at the core and center of everything. Without that, Christmas would be a secular event. It would be a midwinter distraction. This is a short reflection, and it's entitled 
Mary's dream. And in this reflection, <clears throat> Mary is telling Joseph about this dream she had. I had a dream, Joseph. I don't understand it, but I think it was about a birthday celebration for our son. The people in my dream had been preparing for about six weeks beforehand. They decorated their homes and went shopping many times and bought elaborate gifts. It was peculiar, though, because the presents weren't for our son. They wrapped them in beautiful paper and stacked them under a tree. Yes, a tree, Joseph, right inside their homes. They decorated the tree with sparkling ornaments. Everyone was laughing and happy. They gave gifts to each other, but not to our son. They never even mentioned his name. I had the strangest feeling, Joseph, that if our son Jesus had gone to this celebration, he would have been intruding. How sad for someone not to be welcome at his own birthday party. I'm glad it was only a dream. Oh, now let us profess our faith in him. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So with confidence now in God's love and in his goodness, we place before him our prayers and our petitions. We pray for Pope Francis, for Bishop Francis, also for Father Richard, and for all those who minister in the church. Lord, give them the wisdom and courage that they need. Lord, hear us. In our gospel, we read, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. We pray today that the power of the Most High will overshadow the people of Gaza and Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Pray for those traveling home today for Christmas. May God protect them and keep them safe. Lord, hear us. For anyone worried about their health, maybe waiting for the results of tests or awaiting an operation, or anyone suffering from cancer, may God fill them with strong faith and with peace of mind. Lord, hear us. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Knox, St. Joseph, St. John the Evangelist, we pray, we pray for God's blessing upon all those who support Knox Shrine. Lord, hear us. Pray for the faithful departed for Mott Caulfield and Patrick Highland. We also pray for Father Peter Rogers, a Capuchin uh, priest who died in Dublin recently, and for all our departed relatives and friends. May God grant them his rest and his peace. Lord, hear us. And through Mary's intercession, we pray, remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, let clemency hear and answer us. Amen. 
So let us pray. We pray for those who are experiencing stress at this time. Lord, we sometimes feel overwhelmed and stressed out. Everyday problems weigh on our minds, leading to sleepless nights, to weariness and worry, and to more stress. You, Lord, said that we should come to you with our heavy burdens and that you will give us rest. So we come to you now. Take our burdens, our worries, and our frustrations and grant us peace. Remove the stress we feel now and restore our peace of mind. So often we're surrounded by sad news. Give us hope and help us relax and surrender it all to you. Give us strength and clarity of mind. And teach us to take each day at a time. Fill us with your peace, with your contentment, and with your healing. And this prayer we make to God our Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we now have our offer to collection. We thank you for your continued support of the shrine here at Nock. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, and John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. 
So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. believe that at the consecration the bread and wine is changed into the body and blood of Jesus. So present now on the altar is the body and blood of Jesus. What happens now is Jesus offers himself to the Father and he takes our offering with him and then each one of us we offer to God our Father the body and the blood of Jesus which of course is the greatest gift, is the greatest sacrifice any human being can offer to God. It's a high point of prayer and it's also the high point of Christmas. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember your servants, Maud Caulfield, Patrick Highland, and Father Peter Rogers, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially the evil of war. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, anxiety, and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. For a few moments in silence now, let us pray for peace uh, in the Ukraine and in Gaza for an end to the war. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if already there unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
sacrament most holy, all sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Our Lady of Knock, Saint Joseph, and Saint John the Evangelist. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worldly celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So if anybody now would like medals or religious objects, blessed. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, bless these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and the homes in which they are placed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So as regards the announcements for a uh, Christmas, the, there a lot of changes in the masses, so the best thing to do is to take a copy of the newsletter with you. Uh, confessions, of course, continue today down in the Reconciliation Centre, and then the Christmas Eve masses this evening is at half past seven, and then at midnight, 12 o'clock tonight, there are the two uh, Christmas masses, and tomorrow, and then during the week, the sometimes are changed, so you can just check that. Uh, on your newsletter. So thank you for joining us today, those who joined us on television and on social media, and those of you here present. All that's left for me is to wish you all a very happy and a peaceful Christmas. Nolik Fahein, it's a Vashiev. The Lord be with you. I pray that God may visit your home and family this Christmas. May he knock early and stay late and protect you and your family from evil and from sickness and keep you all safe in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.